What's going on, guys? This is Kyle Carroll here with MyMMANews.com, a Carroll's Corner MMA podcast. I'm with Greg O'Brien, fighting on Cage Wars 36. What's going on, Greg? Hey, how you doing, man? Pretty well, pretty well. I appreciate you taking the time to join me on the uh, podcast. Um, tell us a little bit about your fight coming up. So I'm taking a fight, uh, Cage Wars 36. It will be uh, just my second fight, and I'm actually going up in weight for this. My last fight was at 145, and that's probably where I should be, but I wanted to get on this card. I kind of wanted to do something different, so I took a fight at 155. Um, so it would be a bit of a challenge getting past uh, the height the reach of my opponent, but I'm looking forward to it. And you know, as Cage Wars 35, you came off a phenomenal win. Um, you were pretty much out-wrestled and outstruck uh, your opponent throughout the entire fight, I thought. Um, but you, like you said, you're trying something new and you're taking that next leap. And what, what are you taking, what are you doing in your training to make that leap up to the next uh, weight class? Um, so I've been, I've been, the nice thing about being in Toronto is there's, there's a lot of gyms. There's a lot of good guys around. There's Muay Thai gyms, Jiu Jitsu gyms everywhere. Um, so I, I do know a lot of contacts. So I've been going around, uh, training at different gyms finding taller uh, guys to spar with also you know bigger guys in terms of uh, jiu-jitsu but I mean the main thing is just being at my home gym being at AST um, I don't know we got guys to prepare me so um, it's kind of like the same old thing but uh, you know just finding a few different sparring partners awesome oh what's special about AST <laughs> what, what makes the environment there? Uh, different than many other gyms ast it's like a family like we got a great group of guys the, the owner uh jim sabir c they're all awesome guys they all train they all know what it's like um and everybody that comes in there is is just all about helping each other so it, it's really just like a family and you know you go in there every day and it's it's like you're just happy to be there happy to be helping everybody out uh, tell me a little bit about your background in mixed martial arts and how you got into it. I know after the last fight, I I, I asked you right after um, the fights ended um, if you had a background in wrestling, and you really said no. Um, but you showed phenomenal wrestling skills in there. Tell me a little bit about your background in mixed martial arts. So when I first started, I started doing Muay Thai, and I did that for probably three or four years. Um, just by a gym right by my house. And I had a couple of smokers through that gym, um, you know, got into it a little, little, uh, just a little bit into Muay Thai. I never really got into Jiu Jitsu there. Um, eventually I, I switched gyms, uh, started training no gi Jiu Jitsu, really got into that, got into the, uh, tournaments. Um, I won a couple of tournaments in Toronto. For no, in, just in Nogi, and from there moved over to AST, started doing Sanda, um, which is a great striking art for mixed martial arts because you got to worry about the takedowns, you got to be in and out, and from there I kind of just put it all together, the jiu-jitsu, Sanda, all the striking, boxing, um, so that's sort of how I progressed along. Awesome. Uh, what do you expect from your uh, opponent, Corey Butts? I saw him fight at Cage Wars 34. Real tough uh, fighter. What do you expect from him? Yeah, he seems like a tough guy. Um, I expect him to sort of come out the same way he did in his previous fight, um, throw a lot of bombs. Um, I know he's got a big right hand, so I'm going to be looking out for that. Um, but... Uh, in terms of his skills, I, I don't know if he does a whole lot of things better than me. I think I have an advantage definitely on the ground. I have an advantage on in striking as well. Um, I think he's just got sort of, um, you know, the size on me. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to get around that. Awesome. And, um, you know, what motivates you to get inside the ring, the cage? Um, what Who inspires you to keep fighting and training? Um, I think it's just the guys at ASD. I saw Sabir um, a couple years ago at Cage Wars, win a couple of titles there. Um, C. Lau, just winning his titles. 
And I'd been trading for so long. So, uh, you know, C asked me if I wanted to get on a, a card and I said, yeah. And that last fight I did it and I loved it. It was such an experience. Um, the high I got from being in there before and after was just incredible. So just want to keep it doing it and do it again. So that was your, your uh, MMA debut, the last fight. That was my debut. Yeah. I've had, <laughs> kickb- I've had kickboxing fights before, jiu-jitsu tournaments, but getting locked in a cage is just something else. Uh, you know, that makes it even all that more impressive. I think I didn't realize that was your MMA debut at the last, um, because you didn't look like you were in some situations with um, your opponent that, I think some people in a debut might have struggled with, and you, you look like a veteran inside the the cage. So big ups to you on that. Um, Thank you. I saw you doing a lot of lifting on uh, your um, your Instagram page. How much has lifting been a part of your training for this uh, fight camp? So I, I like lifting weights. I like doing it just to, uh, I mean, just for aesthetics, pretty much. But this fight camp really concentrate on heavy weights. I'm going up in weight, mm-hmm. you know, I'm dealing with the bigger guys. So just the extra power lifting, um, just getting me used to that size, you know, just working on that a couple of days a week on top of all of the, uh, all the mixed martial arts training. Uh, now you guys from AST, you're coming down from Toronto um, to the Albany area. Does not having really many fans there, does that really affect you guys or change your mindset when you enter? Uh, the area not really i don't think so i think it's kind of like less pressure actually because if we had a lot of people coming down you know if you lose i don't don't know i think there's maybe some extra pressure there uh not having anybody around you know just my coaches uh a couple close friends it's okay with me awesome now do you follow uh mixed martial arts bellator ufc and if so um what kind of fighters do you wa- like watching and try to implement into your uh, style? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I watch a lot of a lot of UFC. Um, I don't know. I always like Jose Aldo. I usually like the style, especially him throwing like maybe a couple years ago when he used to throw a lot of low kicks and mm-hmm. take his opponents out by throwing those low kicks. Um, one of my favorites who really got me into mixed martial arts was Leona Machida. Okay. Uh, with his karate style, I used to follow him a lot. Um, yeah, guys like that. Um, right now, who I'm following, I don't know, nobody really specific. Um, I mean, who inspires me in, the, in martial arts? It's kind of just the guys at my gym right now. Cool. And um, so this is your second fight in MMA. Where do you want to go with this um, as a career or a hobby? Like, what is your pursuit of this right now? Um, I don't want to take it too much further, to be honest. It's just really a hobby for me. Um, I like sort of just training after work, getting it all out there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, maybe a couple more fights after this this year. Okay. But, uh, not, I mean, I'm not taking it to the professional level, though. All right. Cool. Um, so now, do you, what do you do uh, on the side of uh, training and fighting? Um, do, do you work or what do you, what do you do for a living? Yeah, I work, I work for a bank in investments and finance. Okay. Um, so actually in terms of what I do, I, I'm a financial planner. So my designation is sort of like financial planner. Um, I usually handle the high net worth clients in my branch portfolio is probably worth about $50 million that I deal with. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, get off from work and train three hours or so. But I like it. It's fun. So this is like a real hobby to you. Like, I know a lot of guys who get in the ring of the cage right now, like, they're trying to make this a career. You have your career already, um, and this is just more of a hobby for you. So does that – do you feel like that takes off some pressure? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it probably relieves a little pressure. I mean – I guess if I was going pro and that was my main thing, you know, definitely if, if you take a loss and it's a huge, huge blow, but just being a hobby, yeah, it definitely takes off, takes off the pressure. I mean, a loss is a loss, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And uh, so well, t- tell me about how you felt after, like you said, it was one of the high, craziest highs and um, after winning your fight last time. 
how did you feel walking in the cage right before it started? Were you real nervous or what was going through your mind? So about an hour before the fight, I was super nervous. I mean, I'd never been more scared in my life. They, they had changed my opponent about a week before and they changed it to a professional boxer. So an hour before the fight, I'd never felt nervous like that in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, my coach saw what was going on, so he grabbed the pads and like started hitting pads. So I started hitting pads, got a little more into it. But about a half an hour before, I was, I, w- I had the feeling like I know I'm gonna win. I was marching around. I was actually marching around the dressing room for about <laughs> 15, 20 minutes, screaming. We saw me back there. All the all the guys that were watching me, they were like, "This guy's probably crazy." <laughs> um, I actually ended up kicking a hole in the wall of the dressing room. I was going. Uh, I had like such an adrenaline rush. Um, if you watch the YouTube video of the corner cam, um, on YouTube, it's, you kind of see me marching around before, um, <laughs> for about three minutes and I'm screaming and I'm just, I don't know, the height was unbelievable. So it was awesome. Awesome. So it's something definitely you were, you wanted to pursue and get back into the uh, cage. That's awesome. Yeah. I need that feeling again. Now, no, um, how, how has mar- mixed martial arts changed your life? Has it evolved like affected or um evolved your life in any way yeah definitely i mean before it you know i I was a really skinny guy um probably lacking a bit of confidence but definitely once i started martial arts it totally changed my life changed my outlook um you know the confidence you get from it is unbelievable and the people you meet is probably the best because some of the nicest People, the best friends of my life right now, we're all from from sort of gyms I've visited and guys I train with. Awesome. And are uh, you talking about going to different gyms and all, um, and meeting different people? H- how has that added to, I guess, your short career? How has that added to, um, I guess, the style that you fight? Um, a lot, right? Like when I a couple years ago, I was just just doing Muay Thai. I train at MMA gyms. I'd be taken down so easily because of the upright sort of style of Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. Um, now getting into Sanda, um, I mean, it, it totally changed my style. Um, the different wrestling gyms, jiu-jitsu gyms around the city, um, it's played a huge part in sort of, you know, changing my style, being in and out. I don't think the last fight I was able to show up too much. I didn't open up my striking as much as I could have. And that just goes back to like the guy being a professional boxer. Mm-hmm. But I think this fight, I'll be able to show a lot more of my striking, a lot more of, of how I've developed my striking going from Muay Thai to Sanda to uh, regular kickboxing and boxing. So. Awesome. And uh, is there a favorite discipline that you have? Do you enjoy one more than the other? Um, it de- honestly, it depends on the week. Sometimes I love rolling like no gi jiu-jitsu. You know, sometimes I think that's the best. Um, other times if I go to a Muay Thai gym, you know, I love that too. So it, it kind of just depends on my mood. Awesome. Uh, what, what can fans expect from uh, this fight coming up against Corey Butts? Uh, I think it's going to be a super exciting fight. I know he comes out with a lot of energy and... I think he's going to bring out a totally different side of me. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more striking in this fight. Um, I, I just think it's going to be probably a lot, a lot more striking heavy. This, this, this bout. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, I guess last question before we wrap it up. Um, what is one thing about you that fans and uh, people around, even your gym members don't know about you? but you would like to share with them? Probably that I like to dance a lot. I like to party. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's probably something. I like getting out there. I like to uh, DJ. Um, so that's probably something that fans wouldn't know about me. Awesome, awesome. I know all you Canadian guys were all at the uh, – both after parties, uh, after uh, Cage Wars, and it was always a good time. So, um, yes. Greg, I'm looking forward to your fight, seeing you getting back in there for the uh, for your second fight. Um, wish you the best of luck, and I appreciate you coming on. Awesome. Thanks very much for the interview. Appreciate awesome. it a lot. Are, are, are you commentating the next fight? 
I will be. Yeah, I'll be commentating that from my uh, ringside. So I'll see you guys there. Awesome. I'll talk to you between rounds again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, uh, <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to it. Good luck, Greg. So, guys, All if you right, want to watch you. Greg O'Brien fight at uh, Cage Wars, you can go to Fight Night app, do- uh, download that, or just go get tickets. I think there's, I think I just saw right before we came on, 18 tickets left. So, um, get your ticket. It's at the brand new casino in Albany. Uh, make sure you check it out. So Cage Wars 36 up in Albany. So, Greg, thanks again for coming on to the Carol's Corner MMA podcast. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one. Have a good one, guys.